Hi there, this is Valentine and welcome to another Postman tutorial. I know that many of you are struggling when dealing with complex responses, not necessarily complex, but that contain data structures that you don't fully understand, especially nested objects or complex arrays. In this tutorial, I wanted to show you step-by-step -step how you can handle such cases. So I have here this collection and let's take a look at the first request. By the way, everything I'm talking about, you will find links in the video description so you can import this collection and take a look at what I've done here so you don't have to worry about typing addresses or what you see here. Just check the video description and you will be able to follow along. I have here this response. That's quite easy to understand. It's simply an object. You will see here the gully place at the beginning and at the end and it has various properties. So I'm going to start step by step by making different assertions. I'm going to assert name, the age, but also go into this nested part here. You will see other things that are included. For example, Facebook or Instagram. We'll try to understand how this goes as well. So I'm going to jump directly into the test part. So the first thing to write is to parse the response body. This is formatted in JSON, but now we need a JavaScript object. Now we have this and the first thing I want you to notice is in order to understand how to work with this kind of data, our most important tool is the Postman console. What about starting to log some information? So I'm going to write console.log. I'm going to add here the response. And to open the console, I will go here in the left corner, click on the Postman console. This is a bit hidden. You can clear it here. I'm going to send this request again. And now if you look at response in the console, you will see that this is the request. You can click on it and see what has been sent and so on, but also what we have locked. So in this case, we have locked this object. You will be able to see the properties. It's exactly what you see in the response as well. Now, if we want to test the first thing, so for example, want to check the name, all we have to do is write response.name. Let's run it again. And you will see now it says Jane. If I write something that doesn't exist, name like this, then it will say undefined because this property name doesn't exist. If you look at the response body, this here right below is the response body that came from the server. You will see there is no property called this way. So this is how we can check if we have the right property. Now, most of you are probably trying to write the test. So let's go ahead and write a test where we check if response name equals to Jane. So this will be done by writing tm.test as a function. I'm going to title the test person is Jane. And here we have a callback function where we actually write the tests. So this is a function in JavaScript. If you're not familiar with this syntax, don't worry too much about it. Just make sure you include here a comma because test is a function. We'll take two parameters. This is the name of the test and then the callback function where we make the assertions. Now to make a assertion, we're going to write pm.expect. And what are we expecting? Well, we are expecting that response.name to equal to eql we expect it to equal Jane. So this is our first test for this response. Now, if we run this again and we look at the test results, we're going to see person is Jane. It's always a good idea to make tests fail. So I'm going to write here Jake. You'll see now that there is an assertion error. Expected Jane to deeply equal Jake. Very good. And again, if you write a property that doesn't exist, we'll most likely get something like expected undefined to deeply equal Jake. And in that case, the best thing to do is to use console log and try to understand which properties are available and how to build this path. Great. So now we have a working test. Let's test also the age. That would be a good idea. And it's quite similar to this previous assertion. So I'm just going to copy it and put it right here. Right. So another property is here age. Age is 29. Let's run this. And if we look at the test results, I'm going to see assertion error 
expecting 29 to deeply equal 29. Probably what? What do you mean? 29 is 29. Just a moment. Let me explain. You need to pay attention to the difference. It says here expected 29 to deeply equal 29 between quotes. Here's the important distinction. Here in the body, 29 is a number. This is a JavaScript type. This is here an integer, while, for example, Jane is a string. Now, if you put anything between quotes or double quotes in JavaScript, it will become a string. Even though we know here that 29 is actually a number, JavaScript will look at this as a string. You have a string equaling to a number that will never equal. So even if the value seems to be the same, it is actually not the same. This is common misunderstanding that many of you in the beginning may make. So this is why I wanted to point this out. So now we have two tests here that are working properly. Now let's look at this other part here. This is starting to look a bit strange. For example, how can we test that the email is the correct one? You can look at it and see, oh, this is an object and then other. It's in itself another object. We have to navigate these properties one by one. So again, if you're unsure how to do that, the best way is to use console log. So I'm going to write here, for example, response.other and run the request again. And if I look in the console, let's clear this up and run it again. We'll see here that now I have another object. This object contains another property email, calls another property social media. So let's try to make that assertion as well. Response.other. Then I'm going to write chain at example.com. Let's see how this goes. This will fail because you're now asserting that an object deeply equals string. Again, this is something that we don't really want to. We have to look, oh, this object has properties. So in order to access email as a property, we have to write dot email. So I have response dot other dot email because in this case, we have a nested object. This worked as well. That's perfect. Now going back to the response that we have, how do we assert that Jane is on Instagram? You don't care that she's on Facebook. We just want to test that she's on Instagram for whatever reason. So again, we're going to go to console log and we have to access social media. So let's try to understand what's the context. So we have response.other.email that worked. Let's try out this one. You'll see here that right from the beginning, I'm going to get an error. And if we look at the console, it says media is not defined. So that's definitely very, very weird. The thing with JavaScript is when you have some special characters in the property name, you can no longer use this dot notation because it's something that can be misinterpreted as something else. Any special character in between will be something that JavaScript may look at it as an operator or something different. So for that reason, we have to use another notation in order to access the property. And we're going to use this square brackets. And I'm going to put the entire value of the property between quotes. Practically, we're going to make it a string. And this is how we can access this property that contains the special character. So if you look at it, we now see that this is here an array. If you're unsure what kind of data you have, you can use type of. And you say type of what this thing is. You're not sure. And if you look at it, it says that's an object. But actually, this is an array. An array is also an object. But by looking at it here, you can still tell that this is an object, this is a string, this is an array, whatever it is. It can give you an idea. And every time you see here keys 0, 1, this is an array. So the console can help you in this case understand what we are dealing with. So how do we write an assertion in this case? We're going to start again with pm.expect. And we know that one of these properties is Facebook or Instagram. But for example, the order may not be the same. So maybe Instagram comes up first. So we need to wait to search in this array to put it like that. We don't want to access it by the order. But I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that. So I'm going to expect this to pull 
Let's try Instagram. And again, we have a failing test because our assertion doesn't really make sense. We are asserting that an array equals a string. It will never have the proper value. So for that reason, this is not the proper way to do it. Now, we may know or may notice from this that you have Facebook and Instagram. So Instagram is in the second position, key number one here. When dealing with arrays, we can also use this bracket notation and specify the key number. So in this case, we will now have the first key. And if you don't believe it, we can just use console log here and deal with the key as well. You'll see here Instagram being logged. So we have here the key and we have asserted this. Now, the problem with this kind of assertions where you're hard coding the key number is that if something changes in the array itself, for example, Instagram is now first or there's maybe something in between, then Jane will actually still have an Instagram account, will still be listed here, but you will not have the right key. So your test will fail just because something has changed in the data. And we don't want to have something like this. So for that reason, we're going to use something else. What I'm going to use is to include. And this is from the underlying library that Postman has here, the Chai assertion library. And this includes this very powerful syntax that you can use. Again, in the video description, we'll find also other resources to other type of assertions that you can write. So now we simply have here, without specifying any keys, we are saying this array should include Instagram. And because it includes, then it works. So if we write to include foo, look at the test, we're going to see Facebook Instagram does not include foo. So for that reason, the test will fail. This is just the first object that we have. We have went from very simple properties to very, a bit more complex arrays and nested properties. Let's take a look at something else here. I have a very similar response. By looking at this, you're probably wondering, well, what's the difference? It's the same thing. If you think it's the same thing, let's take our tests and try to understand if it's really the same thing. So let's run the test again. If you look at the results, Gonna get here a type error, cannot read property social media of undefined. So this already is starting to look weird. Even if I write a comment here so that I don't execute this console log, we still get an assertion error expected undefined to deeply equal Jane. This really doesn't tell you a lot what, what has happened here. Why, why isn't this working anymore? This is totally weird. I can assure it is not weird. This is actually normal because Again, take a look at this response. You will see here the object, but you will see that this object is actually part of an array. Now, this array has a single element, but it's still an array. Assuming that this is how the response is formatted and you will never ever get more than one result here, so it will not be more results. In this case, we can get this information from the key. Let's define here another test, another variable, excuse me. I'm going to simply call it person and I will simply extract it from the response. So a person, I'm going to say response and I will get the first key from it. Just to be consistent overall, I will replace response with person everywhere. So again, because now we have the right data structure, because we have identified that this is an array here because of the square brackets, this array contains an object and we know exactly how to write this particular assertion. Great. It works in this case. It's not always the best way to do it, but in, for many cases, we are absolutely sure that this will always be key number zero. You can do it like this and not worry about something else. Now, finally, let's look at a more complex example. As you can see here from the response, we have again an array, but this time there are multiple objects inside the array. And we are only interested in Jane. Let's assume for the sake of it that this changes. For example, Jane can be on the first position, can be somewhere in the array. So you do not know in advance which position in the array will Jane be. So you can no longer use this hard-coded way of finding the person. Just for the sake of it, let's copy this here. Let's ensure that it still works properly. So the test will fail because we are expecting John to equal J. 
that's obvious so we can change here the key and then this works but as i said we do not want to have anything hard coded so how do we navigate through all this arrays here to get the gene there are many ways on how you can iterate over arrays but there's a very elegant way of doing this in a very very nice way and we're going to use a function called find so i'm going to write response.find and this will be a function i'm going to define here a variable p which will be given every time we iterate through the array and on this p which will be an element we can even call it item okay item of the array so we can write here item.name and what we can do is to write a condition. And the condition in this case will be Jane. So if you're not sure what the output of this is, we can write here console log. We can see that we now have an object. And again, we're looking for something that doesn't exist. We will get undefined. That's very important to know as well what happens if you cannot find anything. So because we have in the array person called Jane, we then have this test that works. So this was the criteria that we have used. We could use any other criteria we want. We can use age or any other property. We can use something like any conditions that are relevant. But in this case, you have an ID or you have a name or something reliable to find this respective object. This works for you. And as you have seen, all the other assertions that we have written are still accessible. This really goes to show how we can rely on the power of JavaScript, the power of Chai as an assertion library, to really make an elegant way of testing responses, even if they seem in the beginning to be inaccessible, hard to get. So the main tips from this tutorial, if you want to take something with you, when something is not working, start by using console log. Start by iterating property by property and try to get to the respective property that you're trying to test by using console log before writing any assertions. And only then, only when you have mastered and understood what an array is, what an object is, how can you navigate properties, how can you navigate elements in the array, then you should go to write assertions for those respective properties. Guys, I hope this tutorial was helpful. I know that many of you are dealing with such problems. So let me know in the comment section below if this was helpful. If you have other questions, I would be more than happy to create more tutorials on topics like this. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel for more tutorials like this, and see you next time at another tutorial. Bye-bye.